If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from me, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in countenance were fashioned, when as yet they were none of them. God bless this reading of His Word. Thank you. I want to share with you the position statement of the Southern Baptist Convention. And I quote, Procreation is a gift from God, a precious trust reserved for marriage. At the moment of conception, a new being enters the universe, a human being, a being created in God's image. This human being deserves our protection, whatever the circumstances of some conception. There is a project that uh, is aimed at reducing abortion called Psalms 139 Project. This, this effort was, uh, is where sonograms are uh, used to convince women not to go forward with abortions, to convince them that this mass that is in their womb is not just a mass, it's more than just a mass of cells. It is an actual tiny human being, a tiny life. Once the women have been able to view this sonogram and recognize that this, there is a little child there, 80% of those women have chosen not to abort their child. You see, a large problem of what we have today in regards to the abortion is lack of information. And there are a lot of those folks out there that are trying to stop that information from being brought forth so that they can go ahead and do the abortions. There's a great market in the abortions. And so it's a money market. And that's what they're more interested in rather than in lives. Regardless of where you stand politically on this issue, what I am declaring to you today is not politics. It is the Word of God. And as I believe the Word of God touches on any subject, whatever it says is truth. Therefore, allow me to guide you to the truth of God's Word. As I've entitled the sermon, Sanctity of Human Life, I want to first of all look at the idea of sanctity, the word sanctity. It means holiness or godliness. For we were made in the image of God. Genesis 1.26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, without going into great detail of this doctrine or theology about the Trinity of God and, and this idea of the image of God and how we match up to the image of God, uh, just suffice it to say here that, that we are created by God to be distinct from all other creation, from all other life. And as all life deserves respect, the human life also demands reverence. Then that we were created by God, in the image of God, we are placed above all other creation. We are placed 
in a way that God has chosen to have fellowship with us. God does not choose to have fellowship with an ape. God does not choose to have fellowship with the bugs. He chooses to have fellowship with the human beings. And as God is triune, so also are we triune in that we have a soul, a mind, and a body. If you are considering abortion today, abort that idea right now and you'll never regret it. Some of you probably think, well, why, you, why would you say that to the church right here? There's nobody here. We got a video going right here. This is going to go across the TV. There may be someone out there who needs to hear this. If you are a victim of abortion, where you were not informed and your choices were not what you wished they were today, I want you to listen. There is a way out of your grief. There is a way out of your guilt. There is a way out of the sadness. And that way is Jesus Christ. He can lift that burden from you because He not only knew you when you were born, but He knows you now. He knows exactly what you're going through. He understands you even better than you understand yourself. He died for you and is willing to forgive you. Scripture says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it wasn't because he's, He didn't die just because He said, well, if I die, they'll do good. He died because we need Him. And He's the answer to all of our problems. If you'll only believe and trust in Him. Thirdly, if you are unmarried and are thinking about having sex and being promiscuous, remember these three, these ladies, these, these ladies that were on the video. Remember them. They also thought that it would not hurt to go ahead and be this way. They also thought that everything would be okay if they just went ahead and had the abortion. They thought that it would not happen to them what happened to them. This goes for drugs. This goes for abortion. This goes for many choices that we make in this life. That we think that we know better than what everybody's been telling us. And we have seen on this video many witnesses of the truth and the reality of the choices that we make. I promised you Scripture on this matter and here they are. The first one is that of the Scripture that we read already, Psalms 139. But in particular, I want to read Psalms 139, verses 13 and 14. For Thou hast possessed my reins, Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise Thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. You see, God is there from the foundation, the very beginning of your life, of all human life. Then I'd like to share from Hosea, the book of Hosea, chapter 9, verse 11. In Hosea, we are given what I, I recognize as the stages of development of life. In Hosea chapter 9, verse 11. Li listen as I read. And 
and it actually speaks toward Ephraim and, and the things of the promises God gives. And it says, As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the birth, from the womb, and from the conception. That the actual application or intent of this scripture is about what God's doing for Ephraim. But it's applied also in the understanding of life. That from conception in the womb unto birth, God is there and God is working. But these last two verses that I want to share with you this morning are personally convicting to me. These deal with two people that are world changers. Two people that as God declared them, He declared them even before they were born. He declared them when they were conceived. And He declared them even later of how they were going to influence this world and how they were going to come and care for this world. The first one in the beginning of the conception aspect and the second one <coughs> refers to the sixth month of the pregnancy in which they were. The first one, Matthew chapter 1 verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. What if Mary had decided to get an abortion? Where would we have any hope today? Luke chapter 1 verse 36 And behold thy cousin Elizabeth shall also conceive a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was once called barren verses 34 and 43 And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me Elizabeth talking to Mary for as low as soon as the voice of thy sal sal salutation sounded in mine ear, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. <coughs> Folks, I'm going to share with you once again the position that the Southern Baptist Convention holds on this subject of the sanctity of human life. But after hearing these scriptures, after hearing and seeing this video, how can we have any other conviction? Procreation is a gift from God, a precious trust reserved for marriage. At the moment of conception, a new being enters the universe. A human being. A being created in God's image. This human being deserves our protection. Whatever the circumstances of conception. We have choices that we make in this life. We need to be careful as we make those choices. They're not always easy to come back and undo. And in many cases, impossible to undo.